Okay, so this is the September 27th, 2017 meeting of the Lakeville Board of Selectmen. Our agenda um, is in front of us here. What I want to do is, is skip ahead to number three, which is the request for appointment of volunteers, observers, and wardens for the Middleborough Lakeville Herring Fishery Commission. We have a request from the commission to appoint the following volunteer observers for terms to expire on September 30th, 2018, Alan Frawley, Cynthia Jedrin, Sergeant Johnson, and Janet McCalls McCausland. A fish warden term to expire September 30th, 2019, Luis Derry Wells. And fish wardens terms to expire September 30th, 2020, David Cavanaugh, William Orphan. That's the whole thing, right? Yep. Um, no. And no. It, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Did, um, so I'll move that forward. I'll second that. Do we have any discussion? Did you folks want to add anything to what we're doing here? That's pretty. Only that, um, speaking for myself, um, I've been a warden now for a number of years. I enjoy the position and I'd very much like to continue. Uh, speaking for the commission, all of the folks that were named there are felt that they're very dedicated volunteers who have, uh, most of whom have helped us out in one form or another for years. And even the one that's the brand new appointment has helped us out for a couple of years just as a volunteer citizen. Nice. Well, I, I think as long as I've been doing this, you folks have been doing that. So I defer to your knowledge in terms of who's been helpful and what you're looking for to, to keep this commission moving forward. So I appreciate the insight on the new, new proposed uh, member. Uh, any other discussion? No, other than, no, we'll, we'll appoint them, I'm sure. But the Heron run is down from, what, six or 700,000 down to 150,000? Yes. Not entirely sure why, but it's down, so don't count on getting Heron out of the river for the next uh, couple would, of years anyways. I would think that there's not going to be a reopening for a couple of years. <laughs> yep, yep. Just a, another problem that we're having is because the Damascus being so weed choked and whatever with all the milfoil, the baby Heron, well last year we had the drought and they couldn't get out, there was no water for them to get out. Uh, Taunton opened up the boards on the dam for us. Uh, was it either late December or January when we saw some herring to let them out? Uh, and any herring that we saw in the river earlier this year, there's been a little fish kill due to the mill foil. So we're not sure what's going to happen this year when they get out. Right. So we're not going to get, it, it takes three years for them to mature to come back into spawn. So last year we basically don't have a class coming back. So three years from now, that come pretty much will be down. And hopefully this year, uh, we'll get some rain, some water, and get some errands out of the pond this did, year. Did you, one last one, did you take Community Preservation Act money and do anything with the fish ladders and stuff at the Oliver Mill and things? Or oh, that didn't happen? That's, uh, the Oliver Mill work is still in the planning and funding stages right now. Okay. They, I'm only doing this planning. for the TV for yeah. people that are interested. Yeah, they've, they've got funding. They're planning to do the bridge repairs, and they're still working on funding and planning for the, the rock walls and stonework. Okay. Good. That's it. Thank okay. you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. The motion carries. It's unanimous. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you for coming on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we have some folks here from the uh, haunted house that want to put up some signs that they put up every year. Um, we will have to deal with this uh, with some sort of an official vote for the sake of doing that. Um, I think I'm of the opinion that you can put your signs up and that you should do that because you're running out of time, obviously. Um, but that, you know, we'll add this to a future agenda. Um, you don't need to attend. Oh, okay. 
I mean, if you've done this last, if you've been doing this. Someone told us they, they, had to. they haven't been asking the selectmen for permission to put the signs up. Uh, so okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. And the chairman found out about it, so he came in yep. last week and uh, talked to Lorraine, and I had thought we had said October 11th, because uh, that gives them enough time. He opened the 13th. Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm okay with it in the sense that uh, I'm, this isn't a vote, but if you've been doing it, I, I would encourage you to, to do it with the understanding that we have to vote on it. it a subsequent meeting. Um, I'll vote yes. I'll vote, I'll vote yes. He'll vote yes. So there's your two votes. So, um, you know, I think and they need to put the location, which, what town rights of way they're going to put them. Yeah, on. I have, I have the location. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So what, what we'll do? I mean, like I said, we'll add this to a subsequent meeting and we'll officially vote on it, but. I mean, no one in the interest of time, you, you probably want to get them out there sooner than later. So, yeah. um, time. Can we tomorrow. Do it tomorrow, sure. Oh, okay. the, the locations, make sure they're on the agenda. Yeah, they're, they're where? The, on the corner of Southwick and Precinct. Yeah. And the corner of 79 and Precinct. Okay. Southworth and Precinct. Southwick. They're where they've been South. before, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Spots. And what are the names for the record? I, I don't know where Southwick um, is. So. Kelly Mahoney. Okay. That's what Glenn told me. That it's Southwick. Southworth. Southworth. I think it's Southworth. Yeah. Southworth. Okay. I'll buy into. Okay. And precinct in seventy nine. Yes. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Terry. And may I have your name just for the Terry Watman? I did talk to uh, Glenn too last year. They put the sign so that people coming up 79. <laughs> right. So we, right. we it moved got them. moved, and then other them. residents. So there was, he realizes that it wasn't the committee, the haunted house committee, that put him right back. Where it's other people that wanted that would move it. So he's going to take care of that this year. Yep. We had people calling to complain, and we had the highway move it back, but because the line of sight. For the people coming, mm -hmm. but he'll take care of working that out this year. He said. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming in. Thank you Sorry for the Thank confusion you. on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. okay so number one is the reappointment of Cr Christopher Emsweiler as a call fireman. Uh, so I move that we appoint him with a term to expire on July 31, 2018. Yeah. Yes. We didn't have him on the last July. Yep. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Why wasn't he on the old list? Just an omission. Okay. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries, it's unanimous. Our agenda item number two was a request for appointment of Michelle Darling to the Lakeville Arts Council. We have a letter here from Joanne and a letter from Michelle. Um, and it looks like they both are in favor of Michelle's appointment. So I'll move to appoint her with the term to expire on July 31, 2020. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. It's unanimous. Agenda item number four. Review and vote to approve fuel, oil, and HVAC repair maintenance bids. All right, so this is our an annual bid for fuel, oil, and HVAC repair. We got one bid from Standish Oil. The bid was 0.173 per gallon for delivery and 95 per hour for HVAC, HVAC repair and maintenance. 
for regular business hours and 125 per hour for evenings and weekends. Weekends, their bid is the same as last year. Uh, I move that we uh, appoint Standish Oil for the purposes of providing fuel oil and HVAC repair and maintenance. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Yes. Is, is now the time or later, Rita, for you to explain to me the total cost per gallon of the fuel oil delivered? Uh, what are they pricing it on? The actual oil? The oil. That's I don't care about the, the delivery. The delivery is the cheap part. Right, right. It's off the uh, Journal of Commerce that um, they have to actually submit it. Um, okay. I think it's it in the newspaper. It's out of Providence yeah. Yeah. and things like yeah. that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, they, um, so they the have to show proof. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was my only question. Chamber of Journal. Oh, the Journal. I think it's called the Journal of Commerce, whatever. Um, Tracy will probably put in the correct word. Oh, good. But it, something. <laughs> good. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And agenda item number five is to review subdivision plan for Holly Hill Lane. We have a Form C subdivision plan for Holly Hill Lane, which is a one lot subdivision. Gillian Drive. So, Aaron, seeing you in all these committees, ZBRAC committees, and things, why do we get them? Because it's a subdivision plan and not a regular Form A. The Form A's we don't get. It's just a policy that that the planning board has. Because to it says it's a subdivision, even though it's only one home. Right. We get it. Yeah, okay. it's, it's kind of a technicality. Okay. It's actually in our zoning bylaw, I think, under site. Uh, yeah, maybe. This. Right, right. But I don't Either remember getting form the... A's. I remember getting right. subdivisions. Yeah. And of course, it's only one house. Okay. Yep. I get it. I know where it is. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any comments. No. No. You know, the it's hearing's amazing. been scheduled. Right. Uh, it's the, amazing how creative these plans get, though, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? <laughs> how you get one one house lot. There's a beautiful house that went up, I'll say, in number 84 Kingman Street that was a split off, became a theoretical subdivision. The owner built this fabulous home. Fabulous, not? Yep. I mean, it must be twice as much money as anything in the neighborhood. That's great. All right, so we reviewed it and we no took no, no action. We have agenda item, agenda item number six is a review of the standing for private roads for 2018. <clears throat> In the past, we've looked at this information that Jeremy Peck, our highway superintendent, has provided us. So this is for the private homeowner association cost for materials and plowing in emergency situations. That's my understanding, correct? Yes. So if for some reason somebody had a medical emergency or other type of emergency and there was a storm and the town couldn't gain access, they would send the plows down there, send a sander down there, clean up the road, gain access and then would bill according to the following schedule. $40 per ton for material and $69 per hour for a driver in a one ton dump truck. So he's recommending that we retain those, that was last year's <coughs> costs. He's recommending that we maintain the same costs for the 2017-18 winter. Second that if a voting. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll move that forward. Yeah, I'll second that. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we'll hold off on seven. This is to revisit the school resource officer contract extension. That was something that Mitzi had a question about, so we can drag our feet uh, on that one. Maybe we'll skip eight as well. Um, I think 
think I tried, I put everything out for when I thought should be here. And then, let's see here. Yeah, we'll wait for this too. Um, I guess we could just take a break. You might see, I know, take see. But we event manager, there's no tea on that. I right. know she wants. She'll probably want to look at that. Bartending service. Yep. I think we'll. Even natural heritage, I think she wanted. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. think we can take a break and maybe try to call and see if the train has left the station or not coming. She, she'll oh, answer. Her think. train. Yeah, her. <laughs> I thought you meant the her train. Lake, Lake Cam, train. we're going to take a, a 10 minute break. Okay. There's something in the water. Okay, so we've resumed our meeting. It's agenda item number seven. We're back at it. It's who knows what time it is. It's, it, everybody's getting tired. Everybody. I am. Magically appearing. <clears throat> at our last meeting, Mitzi had requested some information relative to the contract prior to voting on the new SRO contract. We received the information. We had an opportunity to review it. Did anybody have any questions? I did not. I did not as well. I will entertain a motion to accept the contract extension through June 30th, 2018. I'll make that motion. I will second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, it's unanimous. Agenda item number eight, review and vote to ratify the Memorandum of Agreement, MOA, with the fire union. Uh, do you want me to update the board, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sorry. The fire union did vote last night to sign the Memorandum of Agreement, and it is in the sign folder. They agreed to the final language on the two additional holidays. Okay, great. Um, I guess I'll entertain a motion to ratify the memorandum of agreement and to sign it as uh, indicated in the sign folder. I'll make that motion. I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that motion carries it unanimous. Agenda item number nine. We received a notice from South Coast Rail. Hang on a second. From Gene Fox and Kim DeBose. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. The DOT project manager and the MBTA project manager sent a joint email regarding the installation. No, this was the uh, Middleborough train station. So as we've all been aware, the South Coast Rail Project seems as if it may be moving forward, at least for the sake of paying for design engineers and wetlands consultants to go through the process of, of dealing with conservation commissions throughout the south coast yay for the people that <laughs> make their living off of billing for those services <laughs> we must have friends in high places um sadly though the south coast rail does seem like it's moving forward for the sake of providing 20th century transportation solutions to a 21st century world <laughs> Now, what we're trying to do with this is uh, we're going to try to set a meeting with Gene Fox. Uh, we've also planned on inviting Keiko Worrell and uh, Mike Rodericks 
for the sake of having a conversation about what we feel um, we want to see come out of this. Now, I spoke with Keiko on the phone when this news first broke, and she seemed to indicate that it looked like funding would be secured and that this would be the direction that they'd head in and that we as a board should start thinking about what we want out of it, so to speak, meaning if they move the station from Lakeville to Middleborough and that has a potential negative impact on Lakeville, we should ask for some sort of mitigating payment or, or something out of the state. Um, the irony, of course, is, is that nobody that even lives in Lakeville or Middleborough is making the decision to disrupt huge areas of, of those towns. Um, so anyway, I, I digress. What, so think about what you want to say when we have that opportunity to have that meeting and maybe we can um, add to a next agenda item if it's prior to that meeting this discuss notice agenda item again for the sake of brainstorming what we may want. So, you know, it could be mitigation of some sort. Um, you know, Keiko didn't have anything specific mm -hmm. in mind, but she said, you know, just start thinking about, about it. I mean, I think there's obviously if that train station isn't used at all, it's going to leave a huge hole in our entire corridor study plan that SERP had just provided us, which echoes the whole plan for that entire side of town that, you know, the selectmen put in, in place 15 years ago whenever they started with the 40S and 40R thing. So to have all of this concentrated housing that was built with the understanding that it was going to feed commuter rail people to the train and have the station disappear would be very bad for that plan. Um, now there's talk that it may survive for the sake of becoming <coughs> a, a, a station for the, the Cape Way flyer thing. I, I don't know how viable that is or if people even ride it's the train. A, it's a summer deal and it to goes the all Cape. the way to South Station. You can right. just stop like, in Middleborough. Right. Right. It's all right. Three I mean, trains a day. The real concern is empty parking lots become drug havens. Uh, absolutely. No, and that's where I was with. going with yep. it. So, sure. So, right. But I think we'll be ready with that. But my question was to reader and make sure we find out beyond what we may think. Who owns the parking lot where the Lakeville station is now? Does Campro own it, and does it get leased? Because certainly the point. town wouldn't mind. We don't want it. We're not going to save it for the Cape Fly. We're not going to save it for Wareham coming this right. way and Bourne coming this way. They're going to just drive right by and end up right. in Middleborough two minutes later. Right. So really, who right. owns that? Well, I'm 99.9% .9 sure Campro does because that section where they used to park on the dirt, Campro has been proposing a restaurant or a Dunkin' Donuts on that section right. of it. it, was, it was I, I can verify, but I'm, I'm yeah, very sure that Campro verify. owns it. Let's verify. I mean, it may be a simple call to Gene Fox yep. and right. just find out who owns that. Yep. We, I, I don't think any of us would disagree. That we don't want an empty parking lot. No, right. absolutely no, but, not. But that's a really good point in terms of, you know, the MBTA is leasing it currently right yeah. now, you know, what's the current situation with it? Right. I mean, even parking there today, it's pretty full in general when I got there. Oh, yeah. At 11 o'clock or something. Well, once we find out how much they lease it for, we'll see if they even cover their parking. But that, that's a different story. Well, it's done that, through that's a, a different completely story. separate right. agency. Right. So. Well, don't forget, too, we pay the state for the, the pleasure of having a of commuter being, rail station. Yeah, being part of the MBTA. So that's obviously the first question is, do, if you're going to move it, can we stop paying you? Or are they going to keep the Cape Flyer <laughs> on there for the sake of, of sticking it to us, us every, paying them? every well, year? That's a complaint of a lot of communities because Middleborough, I think, is charged, even though the 
the train is in Lakeville. Right. All the communities are near commuter rails get assessed, and sure. that's their complaint. It's not in our town. Why do we have to pay the assessment? Right. Well, so. they get the benefit of it, and I think yep. that there is a benefit in the sense that it does provide a consistent way for commuters to get to Boston right. in under an hour. They can get on the train, and they can be in South Station in 50 minutes, yeah. and it's it really is great for people that use it. I think to convolute it with these mythical New Bedford Fall River riders is is really going to make it challenging and it's going to degrade the quality of the service for the people that ride from Lakeville to Boston I, considerably. I would, I would agree. I sat next to a guy on the way home today and he lives in New Bedford and I talked to him. I actually said, you know, hey, you know, what do you think about South Coast Rail? And he said, well, I live 15 minutes away from the Lakeville station. I moved in New Bedford, so I'd be close enough to the Lakeville station. It's 15 minutes for me to get here. So I'd rather drive 15 minutes and take the train for 55 minutes than I would to take an hour and 40 minute train. And right. how many people actually and are- pay more money to take that train. Exactly, because it's $23 round trip to go into Boston from here. With plus uh, four fifty for parking. Well, okay, so twenty three so plus seven fifty for me to get into the city for the day. Thirty dollars before you blink for next year. Who in in New Bedford is going to pay thirty dollars a day more, to go? Hopefully more Boston. money. Hopefully okay. more money. Probably right. Yeah. So thirty five dollars a day. Yeah. To I mean, spend three and a half hours of their life on a every train. single day on a train. Two hundred dollars a week. Eight hundred dollars a month. I think the New Bedford mayor no. you'd rather have a job in right. new bedford that right. you didn't have to commute right. and I, lose all right. that time in three right. hours a day right. of your life ten thousand dollars a year right. I, we, we may not <coughs> win that argument but we certainly can voice that and say yeah. listen if, if if i echoed what the mayor of uh, new bedford said making an express train yep once you picked well, up x so number of stations Right. Make it express and just blow right by like Right, but them. here's the problem. So I got on in Quincy Center because I had to change of plans with my whole day today. So I had to take the commuter rail out of Quincy Center. Well, Quincy Center only has one rail at that point, in and out. Yep. There is one rail line. It's not like South Station. It's not like any of the other stations where you actually have an inbound and an outbound for the commuter rail. It is one rail line. That is all you have going through there. So if you're trying to actually do proper service and you want to offer enough trains, you don't have enough capacity right. on that line. And that was what they had said when we went to one of those meetings, is that yep. there wasn't, that was the bottleneck, is we would need to build a tunnel. Isn't that what they said? Yes. To dig underneath to be able to allow for enough rail line to cover the commuting right. that they want to do into the city. Right. Uh, but but right. if you, but if you took the way place. Amtrak goes, which is similar, the, mm -hmm. the one track, they send that out obviously and it skips lots and lots of stops. Yep. Does right. Providence, well, does, does some others, but, but it skips all the mom and pop places. But the train I took out today also skips Braintree. So there's a couple stops, JFK and right. Braintree, it right. bypasses yeah. on its way out to Middleborough. It doesn't make it any faster. It just right. you just have to know that if you're trying to get from Lakeville to Braintree or Braintree to Lakeville, you can't take that train. It only exists five times a day. So, and it's never convenient. I mean, I've been at South Station where I have to wait another hour and 15 minutes to wait right. for a train right. to show up. Yeah, because well, you're just one by Right, I think, I think we all agree and have different opinions on the viability of commuter rail, particularly of money. when you're going to come an hour and 40 plus minutes it's in good yeah. weather. In good yep. weather. But having we said that, what can the town get for possible mitigation? Yeah. And, right. and that is, let's say they lease it from Canpro. The next question is, does it just revert back to Canpro? It's not going to stay empty. We're going to jump up and down. It cannot be empty. It can't be, let's put those highway dividers at the beginning of the parking lot, and that's a consideration of, of yeah, we'll block it off. No, right. it's got it's got to go. But do you right. actually? You can't have an empty parking lot. But here's the thing. So when I talk to Keiko too, I mean, one of the questions I have is, there's a lot of things that the state promises that the state doesn't actually follow through on. So if there's anything that we actually want to happen at that area, even though the likely story is that we want some money for it, the state isn't going to follow through on that year after year. 
So if there's some way that we can get them to develop something privately or to do something that will generate revenue that's separate and apart from the state, I'm okay with that concept because I don't believe that they would ever follow through with the fact that they might promise us one year and a one year payment. Right. Uh, they're not capable of actually promising us Yeah, anything. but listen to what you're asking for. You want them to create well, a, a revenue machine. I don't know, I don't right, know what right. they're trying for to do. For a town, like, what they yeah. can't. So what it might be, Their though, idea is, is no, we're but, creating a commuter rail. Yeah, That's going to make money. Yeah, but what it might money. be is if they have land that they are able to give to us for us to do something with. I, I, I just don't know that we're going to get anything. Maybe we get a couple no. years of payment. No. Maybe we get the Holland Road property no. back for free. <laughs> Right, what do you think? We need to use some mitigation. Right. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, right. I, no, I, I, I agree, is but that we what the should. Is for? Let, let's find out Turtles. what they do with that property, Turtles. whether they lease um, it. Yeah, that's know, a good point. That the type of thing. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, yep. So, what so, their plans would be? Well, what, what, right. What's Campro's plans? I mean, right. I think Middleborough, or not yeah, Middleborough, the transit can get out of it. So then, do we develop it for housing and? And can, then we have can they stream, can yeah. they override the mitigation of 40R and 40S money and somehow yep. put this in black and white that it's guaranteed for a period of 15 years or right. something? Is that you know you think that's a DHCD question? Yes. yes. So when we go yes. there next week, that well, we can have that conversation well, once well, we find out no, who owns it. Well, partially, but but really, if the MBTA guarantees the payment. It may not come from the Department of Housing. It, it may come, come from, from the. the MBTA, I'm, yeah. I'm only interested that if we develop the hospital site and other sites around there, that the math that would be used, that it can be treated as 40R and 40R and 40S reimbursement guaranteed by the MBTA, not the Housing Authority. Right. If we're lucky enough to get it from the housing, they're going to say, oh, no, man. Right. Oh, thank you. We'll do it for a couple of years. By the way, the rain, train station isn't there anymore. Right. Yeah, whatever we want it to be, we so want to try to avoid of, it. That was the only angle that I thought of. Otherwise, I don't think they own land in Lakeville that becomes Lakeville's land. Yeah. And, and if they lease it from CanPro, that's okay. But let's find out what CanPro's. Mm -hmm. uh, direction can be I just talked because to it cannot be right. empty. Right. Right. The, the, I'll be happy to have them pay for a police detail to sit there. Yep. Forever. Yep. Because it's going to become a drug haven. Exactly. Let's yep. meet. It'll let's meet terrible. there. We don't need to meet at McDonald's anymore. We can meet right. there. We have a whole place. That we, we have know. a whole place. Yep. My question is multiple ins and outs. I realize the Middleborough station isn't happening till sometime in 2020, 2024 maybe. 2830. 40, 50. I think it's a 2024. Not in our lifetime. It may never why would they, I think I got that. Why part. would they pay to do these canopies? In the parking lot. Solar. They're well, they're looking for any. Solar. They, they they're love to go October. that we have developed a revenue stream. To offset our costs. To offset yep. uh, lease cost without parking for an empty lot. I yep. mean, it's just yep. the handwriting's on the yep. wall. Yeah. We don't care about canopies. We don't care about yeah, solar. They're, they're going ahead and doing this well, starting they're, they're, in October. They're, 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 Why would they spend that money? That's because, because they're, they're nuts. They're, because because they're going to say it's justification. They have because billions of dollars money in solar. In solar they go, yeah. oh, yeah. my God. Yep. Just as and middle, has Middleborough Gas and Electric signed on to buying that power back? No. So Eversource right. is going to have to pay some sort of long line to draw back and... It do, doesn't make no one any, thinks through makes, any of it. makes no nope. sense. Right, it's piecemeal government. Absolutely, it's awful. Yeah. So that's our state. So let's piecemeal deal. Piecemeal government. It's just I, secede. Can we I think secede? Trying, we secede trying to, from the state. Yeah. Right. Can we trying just to get them to guarantee yeah. the 40 s 40 r payments? <laughs> they guarantee them, not the housing. The housing will absolutely waffle. Oh yeah. On whatever. So they don't have the authority. They They're can't. subject to appropriation. It's everything too. subject to appropriation. Right. But the MBTA is a separate enterprise. Isn't, you know? isn't, but right, they, can, they can throw in there. They could put it into their budget, and it would be part of their budget, which is not subject to appropriation per se. That's right. It's well, buried it's in there billions of dollars of, of smoke a, and mirrors. No, but it's still subject to their approval of the budget. Yeah. Once it's in there, it we need never to get be into the solar canopy business. It, it's a tragedy that they're going to do that, a canopy to be vandalized on right. an empty parking lot. 
Well, well that's, that's for I, shade that, for your I, drug deals in well, the no, summer when it's really hot out. I don't think these people <laughs> well, you have do ever talked to a negative. police chief to say, what happens in an abandoned parking lot? Holy crap. No. With cover. The, well, that's the, what I asked. The trailer though. trucks parked there overnight, yeah. motors running, drug deals. The population goes up. All kinds of crazy <laughs> things. Population goes <laughs> up. I asked Keiko if the solar panels would work with graffiti all over them. Because that's what's going to happen. They're going to get vandalized, like you these said. These people... These people are in some kind of a vacuum in Boston. But and let, and let's but try to get them for some money. No, but that's the myth is that we had public meetings, and these public meetings discerned that this is how people want to see this project go forward. Except they never talked to well, us. No, but when, they, when we did talk, and a lot of people, it wasn't just us, we said, yeah. you're absolutely not in tune, with, what not in tune here. with reality if you are even thinking of putting Same a train down rotary. here. Yep. The only people that want the train are the people that work for the train or stand to benefit from the train either personally or all personally so you have this thing that has this momentum with this illusion of of support that is not there yep. people don't want if they had any idea how much this costs but what 1.4 billion it will be interesting to see to if have this Trains c coming through Lakeville now, making right down that track. We yep. all know where it is. Would, would you, right would you do one last yep. thing? I don't want to give you a long project list. Call Sandy Richter and ask her if she knows anything about the solar panel. Solar yes, panels. Yes, I will. Yeah. But it's Just funny because no, that's good. Yeah, because you know. the big question is, it would be interesting to see did the ridership increase by a hundred people in a year. You know, like, what uh, is your actual um, ridership increase by moving it down to New Bedford? They could spend, forever? right. Oh. Right. Well, they say it was going to be 4,500. 4,500, no. And even so when you did that math on $300 million a year, it was, what, a hundred and something thousand dollars per person? We should give everyone a check yeah. not, right. to, not to go yep. to work for yep. a while. Yeah. <laughs> Buy them a Prius. Save the environment. But here's the other thing, Waste too. Waste of our money. So... You have roughly 100,000 people in Fall River and 100,000 in New Bedford, and you're going to get 2,200 a day. You're going to get 2%, 2.5% of your entire population of those cities are going to hop on a train and go to Boston? Of which probably half of them, not even half, but maybe a quarter of them already, if they're going to Boston, are finding alternate means of going to Boston, they, they either already, driving to our pool. station. Or they, they hop pool. on the they bus. Pool. Yeah. Take the bus. There was, did you see that? I don't know it, where it was, but it was on the news at some point. And it was chronicling somebody who had to take a bus to the train to get to Boston. And it was, you know. Right. And the real, the real crime of all of this is get that. Get Uber. If you take, if you took um, the billion dollars and cut it in half, or cut it into thirds, and you give $300 million to New Bedford, yep. Taunton, and Fall River to invest in infrastructure for the sake of jobs. creating jobs. their own yep. jobs. Yep. Nobody would want to go yep. and sit on a train for four hours a day and go, go to Boston. Boston. Yep. Like, why can't we invest in improving the quality of the job situation locally? Because we're still so Boston centric. Right. Regardless. But, th but that's the crime. That's the that's shame the of, of Bill yep. Strauss and the other advocates of this. Yep. Um, that or they don't even, they're not even from Boston, or and he's selling out the South Coast with this purported rail that's supposed to improve things. How's it going to improve things? It's just going to make people's lives miserable. I like the guy from Mattapoisa that said his constituents would drive to the new station. Well, that's what I'm talking what, about, what's Bill the Strauss. What's the matter with driving to the old station that's a mile, a yeah. mile down the road? It's not well, even Well, he's on, the, he's on yeah. the committee. Point five. Well, he, right, he's the chairman of it. Well, he, none of his constituents care. And right. he probably didn't talk to any of his constituents. Right. Or maybe a couple of them were like, I'd drive to a new station. Right. Yeah. But it's Did you actually realize right. that the new station is point f It's across the street from the old station. Right. What's wrong with the old station? Right. right. It, never did, it never did get developed the way that it was envisioned of, of a, maybe some fast food, maybe a, sell cigarettes, you liquor, lottery tickets. Place, yeah. it, ne it never did. No. It never did, nor with 
the Middleborough one, I mean, everyone wants to get to work. They're not going to, it's not South Station. They're not going to hang around and wait for the commuter rail to e go to Pennsylvania. Even Donut and Donuts, York. I don't think they're at Quincy Center anymore. I walked by them today on my way outside. Right, of no, Quincy I don't Center. think, right. I think you're right. Like only, they took it all only out. South There's Station, nothing. only yeah. South Station. There's one convenience store is that's a survivor. There. That's it. Not because of the commuter rail. Because of Amtrak. You're because stuck there and you have to get there early enough, yes. and there's plenty of places to go. Yeah. It's one end of the train station, that's it. Exactly. You don't need it at every other station. No, so we definitely don't support the South Coast Rail. However, <laughs> what can we get right. while the money wagon you is want, going through right. the town? You want money, is what it is. I can't imagine we want anything else, but I'm They're going nervous to shove about. It down our throat. Yeah, I'm nervous what about them promising us something in terms of money through some program that currently exists that then will dry up after a year or two, and they say that they've taken care of their obligation. Right, that's right. it. I, I think we have to say that it it has to be for like a 15. Year how do we? How do you get that? Well, right, right, right. And and it really and it has to be long term because the the negative effect is long term. Is long term. Yep. The, the state seems hell bent on urbanizing every town in the state complete streets complete streets that's federal yep but there's this but it's this trickle down whole process of we're going to urbanize every town yep and we're going to make them all conform to these rules that make it cookie cutter cookie cutter for every everybody to um you know look and feel the same experience um and it's you know we could beat this to death we have beat it to death why hasn't the chairman stepped in and stopped this so i will <laughs> um contact jane fox to get a date uh for the full board okay. to meet uh with her yes her, yeah. her team and, and invite uh, keiko and mike i wouldn't mind con making sure the gazette is here and maybe we can get jeanette barnes from the globe here i mean i i honestly think that it's important <clears throat> that they hear what it we is. have to say because this is the single people are most not important thing facing Lakeville in terms of impacting the quality of life in town for the for the next generation and what I think we believe to be a complete waste of state taxpayer money and I would like them to hear that from us whether or not they want to hear it or believe it or move forward with it I think well, it's a complete waste see, of money. it's a question of it's a question of opinion so they don't have to agree with it no but right the the solar Pilgrim Junction that they're proposing is is I think becomes in their parking lot. Junction. Well, it becomes in their parking lot. It's not it's not just the, uh, the you know camp. I think it's the parking lot, the and I don't even around. think it's allowed in town in theory. Yep. What solar? No, we have solar regulations right. against right. what we can do there, anyways. Right. But that I had a, that question of. Right. Who owns the land? Is it right? Right. The state? So, so because otherwise, right. do we have any jurisdiction over? You know, we have a solar bylaw. Right. How does right. that interact that, that with we're this? We're not going to have them put solar right. in um, in a wait, sandy. I get them mixed up. But I guess it's real. Right. It was like yeah. the first thing that. Yeah. It's really the right. was on the board. Just just 14. email this to Sandy Richter yes, and see if she's right on top of it I think because they talk about all the modules through here there's a cultural insensitivity naming it Pilgrim Junction I don't want to call it Wampanoag Junction well no we're in Lakeville where, <laughs> where our where our train station is it was a it's huge actually an excavation of, right. of Native American artifacts it took Oof. a year to excavate Oof. that whole area was was a huge settlement mm -hmm. and, and the irony that they would propose Pilgrim Junction not a quarter mile up the road to replace our station I, I hope the irony is not lost all right so we're gonna move on <laughs> yes <clears throat> what else did you guys wait for me for <clears throat> management oh, agreement yes. for the Loon Pond Lodge it's so Bill Fuller is not here he wanted to attend but he didn't make it. So we have this draft. Um, Rita's going to update us on why we probably won't vote Sign on it. this tonight. No. I'll right. take five minutes just to go over um, Bill's attorney. And, and here, yeah, yeah, so here's the reason. I'll just explain it quickly. Um, Rita had sent this to Bill's attorney, and he hadn't responded until late in the afternoon. Um, so I didn't want to drop this on everyone and mm -hmm. have a vote tonight. I think um, Rita can explain what she knows about it. Mm -hmm. We can take this 
and, and review it and then we can um, maybe set up a quick meeting Monday or Tuesday next week just to um, to vote on this if everybody's in agreement with everything is this a, like an email from our town council yes so this is our town yeah. council. yes so what I did in the agreement um, was can I just ask one more question yeah. before we get into that? So this is our town council going through the agreement that we previously sent to town council. Going through the changes that Bill Fuller's attorney just so recommended. Did he, so where are the changes that he, so Bill what, Fuller's attorney recommended? Because from what I see, there's we have this agreement. I just want to know, like, so where I, am I going from yeah, here? So I here? took that, so don't look at that agreement anymore. I took that agreement. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just noticed uh, the penalty section is not different. I made notes on everywhere his attorney made recommendations. Okay, so and this, then, is, this second piece on like page yeah. three is the agreement after Bill Fuller's attorney has looked at this yes. and the changes that he's suggesting are in blue. And our changes were in red. Is that correct? Um, it, it's hard the different colors when when you see my notes those are the things he recommended who recommended our town no. council no bill fuller's attorney okay so i went over each one of these quickly well not quickly but with lee smith our attorney and some of the this changes the right he that. had no problem with some he recommends not changing so what i'd like you to do is take this away with you <laughs> okay to um uh, just look at it so can for instance if you if you want to just go to page um, at the very end page 10 um, at the bottom of the page his question the attorney's question was asking Bill Fuller would you ever want to assign this to another one of your business ventures who's attorney Bill Fuller's attorney asked Bill Fuller, would you ever want to? So I crossed it out, remove, because okay. Bill Fuller would never want so, to. So the main ones are on this, that you need to consider on this front email from Lee Smith. So can I just clarify one yeah. more thing? So yeah. this agreement from page 1 through 13, yep. any markups are Bill Fuller's attorney sending this back to us with his proposed changes. Anything you've handwritten are your comments. Anywhere I've written other com other sections, his attorney changed. Okay, so anything in markup is yeah. something that Bill Fuller's attorney yeah. changed. What like, about red? What does red mean? Uh, those were just some of my typographical corrections. Not okay. Yeah. So if I were to, I'm just trying yeah. to like understand the the. I know it's all in all different this? colors. Because generally, mixing. like, so if the the purple would be Bill Fuller's attorney's changes, but the red would be our changes on the markup. Page Is two, right? Mitzi. No, his his attorney did all this in blue. On page two. Yeah. So go to page three. That's where there's like multiples. So. All right. That that his attorney didn't do anything to that. That's been. Blue is his attorney. Listen, you can straighten this out yeah. with her after hours. We don't care about all this stuff. But how I, do you know what the, is this the final copy? I don't understand. I'm going to take this home and figure it out. All right. Let me know if you figure it out. I can't. We can't discuss it. But let me know through her. You can. Right. You can't even <laughs> yeah. do that. I know. No, I'll oh call you. How would you. I'll would call you. you I just. Each like, separately. <laughs> I just. <laughs> I know. It's I don't understand. It's, it's but a what his attorney did, Mitzi. His attorney. Of, uh, <laughs> I don't understand this markup. His version. attorney. Do we have this in Word? Do we have it in Word? Yeah. Can you please email it to me? Because that will give me the detail of who made what change when. In markup. I'll version. make it clarify you. Uh, don't yeah. do anything to it. Just forward me the markup version. Okay. All right, perfect. Me, then I'm good. His attorney took the copy without the change in. 3.3, which was the penalties, which I spoke. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think that so I should be able to just table that. this, and, and like I said, if you have 
Um, I will talk to Rita. Yep. Questions, but if you, you can, can talk forward to Rita this about to me it. in Word, and then we're going to try to. We're going to try to set up a meeting to approve this. We want to try to approve this sooner than later, but I didn't want to have this conversation that we just had half of tonight because I knew <laughs> that it would take forever. And we still wouldn't understand it because we just have to sit down and read it, either in word format or print. So um, we'll just piece that together and, and circle back to, to button that up. Could we, uh, he is available Monday night? Is um, Or... Like I don't Monday even care afternoon. if we do it during the day. I mean, I think if Mitzi yeah, gets... Well, I, I know. If you want to do it Thursday next week when we're all together anyways with DHCD. Oh, perfect. You know, like... Because next week we have that meeting on Thursday that we're there all day. Well, we're not there all day. No, but I mean, we can do something where we're going anyways together. So we meet so, him after that? Uh, does he have to come? No. Well, he's not coming to Boston. Yeah. Oh. But just to have that conversation because we're together anyways next week on Thursday. Thanks. That's soon enough, right? Yeah, I think so. Thursday? That works, right? Thursday? We used to on Thursday. What I mean, time would you want me to tell him? I mean, does he want to be, does he want to meet with us? He would like to, yeah, I think Aaron wanted, uh, had invited to him to meet. Before we go to Boston? When are we going to Boston? 10.30. It's a 10.30 meeting. Yeah, so we have to leave by 9? Nine? 9-ish. Nine Are you taking the train? No. I've had enough train. I'm there like four times next week. We have to take like the 8.15 train to get there on it's time. It's like 8.02. I don't know that, well, I, I don't care if we meet early, but it would have to be early. Nine o'clock? No, no, with Fuller. Oh, no, for us going in, we can meet here at nine. But like eight thirty. are we talking about getting together with We Fuller? could meet at eight with him. He's, I have had many meetings with him at eight in the morning. I have a legislative meeting with the Cranbrook Country Chamber, but I could move that, but... Can we just have the meeting and what, is, what does he want to? We, we don't have to meet him. Yeah. If that's what you're leaning towards. Yeah. Like we're all together yeah, all day. I think, I think you'll be all right with the changes. Time. Mm -hmm. we call yeah, no, take whatever you time you need. I'm not, I, I didn't, uh, as I said to Rita, we're, we're a group that ideally shouldn't be reacting to emergencies. And I know that they want to get this squared away, but we should have time to review it, review yeah, it digest it. it. I, um, I'm also okay with meeting the night of the 4th if we need to. If there's a quick meeting that we want to have with him that Wednesday night, I could do that. Okay, that might be the best thing to do, to give him the opportunity if he wants to meet with us. And if he doesn't want to, we can still just... Just meet and be done with it. If he doesn't want to, we can over. meet... Yep, Approve have it, it and yeah. move, on. move on. I'm okay yep. with that. That might be the okay. safest thing to yep. do. Yeah. I agree. So if okay we're meeting, that. he's welcome yep. to come. But he doesn't have to, yeah. But it yeah. may be yeah. a, doesn't a nothing, him. right. Right, and that's we, right. completely we don't want free to get for me, so I'm fine with much. that. Okay. Because some of his attorneys recommended changes our attorney didn't agree with, so I think you do so have to, to know, talk it right, through. He has to know that. So I'll share his notes, yeah. so our attorney's notes with right, him. If our attorney says no, we don't want to. I'm that. okay with whatever time yes. I'm on that, Wednesday, 6 o'clock, if that works, Definitely or 6.30, Definitely take whatever. that step. Yeah. You have to yeah. post it, obviously, yeah. ahead enough. Whether we have it or not, something. Yeah, because I, I know he coaches um, football good. for his son, and Tuesday he couldn't make it. I'll check on Wednesday, okay. 6 o'clock. Yeah. Is good for you, Mitzi? Yeah. 6 p.m.? Right. Yeah, I don't know if that works for me, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. That's the, the five plus minutes. All right. All right. Moving on. I'll send that to you, Nancy. Okay. Number 11. This is an ancillary matter. We have a contract for bartending services at Lingpon Lodge. It's expired and we need to renew it. 
Do you want to do that the same day? Put that off with that same uh, event manager and try to have them. This is just a this is just a repeat. Yeah. But this is the one thing that we talked about multiple times where it was, you know, didn't we want to put this in conjunction Jim with Mike. the event management and the dates on it? Maybe we don't need it that way, but it's like a random May through May that we knew mm -hmm. we were already late on we're this. And we've been operating this Because we were hoping it would be July 1st um, and have so everything on July 1st. to the same contract? Sure, I, I don't care. Uh, it's, it's fine Taylor. to do it that way. Okay. It's not, again, it's, they're already not in compliance and we're right. already not enforcing it. So yeah. okay. if it waits a week, it won't matter. I think the park commission had asked to. Yeah, but why do they care? Week. I mean, what does it matter to them? I'm okay with it. I mean, do they have a legitimate reason as to why that would matter? Other than, like Missy said, to uh, coordinate. No, the, they, they, that's what they want yeah. to do, right? But they we're not ready for the first one. With the other one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I thought you meant they wanted to get it in place because it had expired. But it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. All right. No, we're on the same page. Okay. Perfect. Um, all right, so agenda item number, oh wait, let's see if there's any new business. I actually have some new business. Um, sorry. To, uh, <laughs> Would you like me well, to share it? You, you, you didn't do 13 yet. No, no, we're going to, that's old business, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So um, I had a meeting of the CDC last night, and we did not reappoint Maria Martin as a CDC member and she would like to be reappointed. She did not attend the meetings with our, in accordance with our attendance policy of which I'm not sure we shared with anybody last year, but it is a, uh, she desires to be reappointed. So I would like to make a motion then ratify it later on a further agenda as we have to do to appoint her as a associate member of the CDC, term to expire July 31st, 2018. And she's a regular member today. She, we don't oh. have her as a member at all. Oh. She was an associate member. We'd appoint her again as an associate member. We don't have any associate members. We have an opening for two. But if you don't, right, but if you don't go, I'm not that interested in doing yeah, that so either. Yes, now she's going oh. and she wants to be involved. Last year her schedule didn't match up with ours. So I'm okay. She's requesting to be appointed as an okay. associate member, okay. and then yeah. kind of. Sounds like you sound like you didn't tell them we were doing that. To not appoint them. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like you're a little embarrassed. I'm not really embarrassed over it. Uh, that was our policy, and I didn't appoint them for not showing up. So she reached out to me, and she said it's similar to what we did with some of the other boards and commissions, where she reached out and said, you know, hey, I was wondering. Uh, am I still on the committee? And I said, no, you didn't make our attendance policy. What's the attendance policy? I'm not entirely sure. So I'd like to appoint her as an associate member. Okay. I'll second that. All right. I'll put Truthful. The next agenda. All right. <laughs> Are we, we'll vote on it next meeting? Or? I'll, I'll put it, you can oh, vote okay. today. Okay, and okay. Then no, no, okay. that's fine, the that's fine. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh, we're still in the new business, right? New business. Yeah. Do you have some new? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm voting aye on that one. But on the so on the solar panel thing, from of course, shame on me for not reading everything exactly. But I think we we have an ordinance not to allow this. This is going to devalue the properties in that area. I, I know that we talked about oh, whatever yeah, the solar, because um, there is a bylaw that we talked about three and a half years ago. So so I don't know how they get, so it's important, I think, that if they're talking October now, mm. w we need to, and in theory, stop who, this. Who, know, who owns the property, right? And who I, owns the property, but I, does what does Nate have to say, what does Sandy Richter have to say, and what do these people hear, the public hearings and things about putting solar panels, that they're gonna look down at these? Well, I guess, I find out after they the fact, do what they to do. they've been in touch with the assessor's office, and we weren't informed by the assessors, so I guess they've been going back and forth with the assessors. The hell's the assessors? So the assessors know who owns that assess. property. Right? Well, 
I don't know what that question is of the assessors, which has nothing. It's all about assessor. You said this. Yeah. No, the, no. Uh, I'm not talking about assess. I'm talking about a solar panel project has a procedure in town to but do. But they're also assessed taxes on it. Oh, I get that. No, who's, I'm not worried about yeah, that. A, I'm not worried taxes. about that. There's a permitting aspect. Yes. Right, the permit. I'm, not, aware I'm of. not wild about a solar so panel have, I don't have the zoning project in this. the middle of a neighborhood. As we, yeah. It, it needs. Right. You, you see, you see them. They're fencing. They got barbed wire. You right. have to secure the whole right. area. I mean, and Aaron, Aaron, and yeah, Aaron talked about that. These seem to be canopies. When they talk about canopies, it's not the train station. They put canopies within this parking lot, I think, and then I think this is large scale that, solar volcanic, and I, it, I believe it's by right in industrial. If I'm but not they don't mistaken. own the land. I don't think they have to. Well, they probably get. Done. I, I. They probably have some kind of crazy exemption, but, but I think there's still a hearing process for solar panels. I could this be is wrong. Ground mounted solar. Is that is that the, it's oh, on canopies. But that's under an overlay district. Is that a large scale ground mounted solar photovoltaic overlay district? No. And it's for. It's a lot of words. Like that's a right. it's a district. Right. We, we don't have, have to a find, district, we but we've right, never put right, a district. We don't have anywhere. to find that answer out right, but we need to find it out tomorrow because we may want to say mm. yeah. you might want to do a cease that's and a desist. Right. Yeah, right. but that's only if we allow if we have that overlay district. Which we don't have that overlay district, right? No. Well this is what we, made it, it exists, but we've never right. designated it exactly. to a town meeting as such of an overlay district. I think it says So how can they do it? I think it says in here industrial. It can be done in industrial. Um, but that, yes, but I think you still have a process of hearings and stuff. No right, site plan permit. review. No, as of right, shall be subject to site plan review. Um, may proceed without the need for a special permit, variance, amendment, waiver. Let's do something at the fall town meeting. Put it on the. Uh, put it on the special town meeting. But right, right. Let, let's see what Sandy Richter and Nate take on this, this is, is all done as part of green communities but, but this it, devalues this their properties right they're urbanizing the entire state but let's really look into this because if we can stop it at a special town meeting is that what we want to do first of all right. but secondly oh, I, you know I think so. if so we have to probably get some hearings going right now i can see housing there not not a solar or right. exactly we might want to propose the brick bylaw where if somebody puts up a solar farm we can smash them with bricks <laughs> As a matter of right, without a special <laughs> permit. Designated location. Do we get to do it personally? No, no. Because I kind can. of enjoy that. Is <laughs> no, that can no, we do that at Winterfest? No, 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 no. We'll have a I'm shuttle. Joking. So it does so say to include industrial, industrial yeah, all yeah, industrial districts as shown but in the map. Is that industrial? Uh, Where's that giant zoning map no. right behind you? It's, it it's not, isn't it? Residential at this point? I think it's. I think it's or did business. we just it put it as business. business? Did we it just put it as business, business. at town meeting? Industrial, right? Blue was industrial. Yep. We did. We did it because we did it because. Is that part of it? Because we thought it was the businesses. Right. The train right here. Did that not just change? No, it always no. was industrial. Right. Right. It was done years ago for Canpro because the idea was there was going to be a bunch of businesses next to a train station and people would commute to it for jobs so it's subject to site plan review <laughs> so everybody missed what, the mark what? on the use of that train right <laughs> actually it was way right. before the train was the train didn't come till 97. right 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 um, right it was it was done years yeah, right. years before yeah. it was going to be the industrial actually plan. i had to come across that in looking up something in our zoning but, uh the old way they described the zoning but even, though and it was, even though it's legal I still think there's a process that they have to go through. But I plan review. Right. So, and that hasn't happened. Do you want to propose and it the through planning board. ZBRAC and the planning board to change the zoning there to business? Or like, what were we going to do? What's well, the 40 Well, there are no business. Overlay? There are no businesses. What there are we now? doing though with um, the town meeting? We're going to put the 40R, expand the 40R district. Right. What does that do? Nothing. It's an overlay. Can we change the underlying from industrial No, but you could business? change the solar bylaw. 
There's two, too. There's the large scale and then there's on site solar photovoltaic installation. Th this I think is that this might is be that. This is large scale. It is large scale, okay. But this is. Ground mounted. Aren't they putting it on canopies? Yeah, but is that it still is. Yeah, but I think they're putting yeah. canopies with them through the park. But I guess Nate is going to be the one I'll reach out to yeah. first. But that's a good point. We can, we can gather some information. Right. We can figure out right. what we feel about this, and we can propose. We may not have enough time to do the hearings to change something at town meeting, but we can certainly try. Yeah, so why don't if, that's if why that's we need to do this. We right, we need to get this information as soon as possible right. because yeah. we probably need six weeks for the hearings and what are we out before Right, right. But but six let's weeks. let's let's say let, let's get when when I say Nate, Nate Nate and Sandy aren't the only people thirty Busy. days have September. But <coughs> but you might Sorry. have to do a cease and desist while it <coughs> while we're thinking about it. Once they go in there and start to do this. I'm told. Uh, oh, sorry. Good thing no water in that. I think it will be a problem. It, it, so maybe on our next agenda, which is in a couple of weeks, we put this back on there but gather some information. Well, who owns it? So well, it, well, we're back to that. I, I, think, I'm, I'm, I think you'll find out I'm, that it's CanPro. Let's, and it's, yeah. and let's it's see if we can figure this stuff out and have an update on well, Wednesday. On Wednesday on the fourth meeting, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, at least so we know. On and then, right. Yeah. Because that way we have a deadline to get some information on this so we can yeah. make some decisions because we're running out of time. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I bet they have a lot. I bet the MBTA has a lot of rights. Do you really think they're actually going to move? But there's no po Well, what they want to do is they want to put this on with the existing parking lot regardless, right? Oh, yes. So that yeah. they yes, there's nothing to do with right. abandoning it. Right. What a waste of money. That's not oh no, but they don't care. They because. But have they not gone for site plan review? Have they not gone through no. the proper no. channels? No. no so no matter what, we want to just stop them on that. They went to the regardless. assessors. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. I, what is the process I think, that we need to I do think to a let cease, them know? Right. Cease no, and I think a, yeah. a cease and desist from an yep. attorney would be yep. in place yeah, talk to Copeland on the fourth. Yep. Yeah, right. let's, make sure, we, least. let's yeah. make sure we get in touch with Copeland and Page. I mean, you can always do a cease and desist and say, oh, man, the we made a mistake or something, but it will wake them up. Yep. Yeah, you can't just do what yeah. you want with it. And you'll find out, oh, we're the, we're the government. We can do whatever we want, MBTA property. Maybe, but we got to right. at least try to put the brakes on oh, it. I, to try to, oh, Because we don't want that there. No. 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 We want that to no be. Benefit. It's empty and abandoned. Mm -hmm. So we can air. build, yeah. Right. I don't think Campro would want them if they're going to abandon it. That's their property. But they're they're not going to want those. Property is. Who knows where, what money is being involved in all yep. this? Right. If, if Campro has a lucrative contract, and I can look up the owner the right now. Al Gore yeah. could be selling the solar panels did to you? these guys. We have no idea. Did you find it says the well, train did, station. Um, I just did a quick Google search, but it shows up under um, MBTA, owned by MBTA at 125 Commercial Ave. And I went to our um, field card, and it doesn't even register on our field cards. And there is a field card for it when I looked up all the buildings. Yeah, we, we, we can do that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. But so it's important. Just so. as important is the update on natural heritage for the new police station. We had a meeting with natural heritage <coughs> on Friday, September 15th. And the gist of that meeting was, despite what we thought, we need to do what they ask us. So as a result of that meeting, which is not a public hearing, it's not appealable, took place in a parking lot, no minutes were taken. <laughs> as a result of that meeting, which is under the guise of the Natural Heritage uh, Statute, we were told that we need to put up a silt fence and we need to do a turtle sweep and we need to verify that there are no turtles there and if turtles are found we need to put radios on them so that they can be tracked i'm not making i'm not making you have this to up. like catch them and put a radio on I'm them i'm not making this up yeah, a little you gps use, to on, a they go. on a yep. turtle yeah. use a special yep. glue yep. to affix the radio 
the long and short of it is is that we need to do certain things to Turtles. mitigate <laughs> for the taking now this is considered turtle habitat and as a result of that in addition to some other land that is yet to be determined how much exactly that's a, a point of, of debate among the town our consultant and natural heritage but we have to determine the scope of the taking so that's the police station land plus the parking lot that according to natural heritage did not exist and has been expanded despite the fact that the entire parcel is under their control including the new facility or the new fields that they were starting to build right right but they have a permit for that so once they determine the size which they're in the process of doing that will determine the amount of like kind land we need to match we have to if we take an acre we got to give them 1.5 so it's going to be somewhere between three and four acres of a taking and then we'll have to give them somewhere between whatever that number is times 1.5 unless we don't have any land that's like kind meaning upland turtle habitat type land if we don't have any of that that's town owned that wasn't purchased through state money and other such criteria we will have the ability to pay into a mitigation fund to the tune of roughly 10 grand an acre um, I think uh, we're doing a diligent search to you determine whether we have without going to jail. Um, but that's okay. Well, I think we I were all it. relieved when it. we learned that it was only ten thousand dollars an acre. Right. Right. Because. Right. Right. Um, I, I we, think. Right. Ten acre. Uh, what is right. it? Two to the, three acres. What What I made clear to the woman from Natural Heritage and to everybody that is effectuating our purpose of building this police station meaning Rita Nate Lorraine that were there for the town and Brian our consultant is we have to get this done yep. so we can break ground in the spring if this gets delayed because of the turtles it will cost way more than fifty thousand dollars because we'll delay the bids the bid yep. the contingencies everything will go up yep. so yep. there's an action plan in place and they're executing that plan the silt fence is already up. Yep. The turtle sweep plan is, has been provided. Brian is working a lot on this. He's given us a quote to do all of these services, um, which they have us over a barrel. We really just need to do it, and we really can't yep. argue yep. whether it's right or wrong. So it's irrelevant. We just have to do it and get it done so we can build the police station as planned. So That's do we have any... <laughs> Is this what this is? The attachment is like I, any sort of upland, like turtle habitat ish. Well, after talking with Land. Nancy H to it, necessar doesn't necessarily have to be upland. And I do apologize. In your packets, I was supposed to give you two different emails. I gave you the same one twice from Brian on the MEPA. He's got a clear MEPA. Yeah. The second one was on the possible cost of the mitigation. Remember that yeah. email, Aaron? Yeah. So I apologize for that. And then even some of the properties I've looked at, I attached, it was late Friday night, and I'm, I'm looking at this, um, and I'm saying, what did I put together for you guys? But quickly, the one I think that it is pretty good, I'll look with Brian out across from the Eagles up on County Road. Yep. We have 20 acres that uh, the Roundsville's donated to the town, which happens to butt up against another. Well, that's. Okay, this one, I'm sorry, is 12 acres that was donated by the Roundsville's. It abuts 20 acres of town owned land already, which abuts. Uh, Mass Audubon, and even though it is wetland, uh, Nancy's going to give me the aerial views. It's habitat. It's good habitat. Um, that she thinks, you know, maybe this the 12 acres, which would be if it's six. That's maybe the one and a half to two. 
Well, no, he's assuming that we need to mitigate for four acres, so we need to give six. Okay. This is 12, right? Yes. And There's no conservation restriction on it. This is town own land. But, but Aaron is made a point Street? back the last meeting that I want to make sure that it's not buildable. called the buildable land, that you're better off paying them the $50,000 right. than you are. Of tax revenue. Of, right. Because the town of, could sell. 12 acres yep. right to be right. built on right so so I need I need someone to look at those properties just to see well, whether they're buildable and, or not. and Nancy uh, I don't want to offer them up in theory. she's worked all day today she found some more acreage across from on Rhode Island Road across from the transfer station that abuts up to uh, clip uh, that that means good habitat too so we're putting together uh, a list yeah, for the selectmen because he's, yep. he's looking at it from from an environmental standpoint there's certain criteria for yeah. what they need to you know he needs to yeah. review it from and, and just and with, and I guess my yeah. biggest question is always you know if we have a tax assessment on all of this too you know it's like I see this on vision but uh, you know it says the appraisal on one of these properties is 419 five so yeah but it's owned by the town so we're not doing city. anything on there too but right. is, does that factor into our total appraised value for the entire town i still don't understand yes. how that works That's so the, the whole complaint that john oliveri has had for years is there's all of these little parcels that the town owns free that are yeah. that we don't ever collect tax revenue on and, and yet not we worth still what are they're appraised for we, and we should we should look look at them and determine whether once again, whether they're saleable, and if we do want to sell something, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, unrelated to yeah. this, we want to get by this right. this focus no, I, first. But I want to make sure that the land we're offering them is not worth not more correct. than fifty yeah. thousand yeah. dollars. I don't want to give them right. yeah. a quarter million dollar piece of property right. when I could have written them a check for fifty thousand. Isn't that silt fence looks much bigger than than three or four acres? That's just no, no. To, that's to the, the, it, 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 it's that. Well, I don't know. The, What's the linear feet on that? I think it's written in here somewhere. Yeah, I was trying to quickly find that somewhere. We thought it was uh, four acres else. to start with. Um, that parking lot, unrelated. We'll find out whether that's. Uh, I think that parking lot's been for a long time. He got wishy-washy well, when he said, "Oh, the photos weren't proper." We can go right back on Google Earth. And that can be done in 10 minutes. She did already. Yeah, she, <laughs> she, she already did. She Natural did. Natural heritage. Yeah, but they got wishy-washy with the answer. This 2006, 2007. Yeah. And they says, well, you know, it, it looks like it maybe was, maybe wasn't there. Nate can figure that out in when two did seconds. They, when but, did they take out the permit for the athletic uh, fields? Because we ran into that. It was expiring. Was that seven years? That happened last year. I where it expired. No, no, th that's the new stuff. I know, but no, wasn't that this old. No, they're, they're talking about this park. Doesn't along. the new stuff? Yeah, it's all the same. The, permit. like, isn't it under the same entire permit? It is. That they would have looked at the entire it is. thing. But but here's the thing. Five years. We don't have the luxury of fighting. Yeah, over. I don't no. really care. Like, no. Whatever yeah. we need to right. do to get. Right. Right. I agree we'll with the acreage. I agree we'll do with the acreage. If this was a year ago, right. we'd say, hey, look, we'll look at that. We don't agree with this. Right. Right. But. We, we lost a lot of time. I think Reach, Rita was, was following a path to to have this not happen not, not in terms of yeah. done, right. new right. permit. Doing, right, and, and right. We, we stumbled along with that, and yeah. ultimately it, it didn't work out, unfortunately. So now we're stuck dealing with them, yep. right. and we have no leverage. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I, yeah, I'm okay with right. whatever no, we have to I, do no, to get it done, I, but there's a I lot of ancillary follow-ups from this, including, right. you know, again, we're looking at land that we have value on that is not valued. Like, land that we own as a town, does it have value? You know, what are we doing right. with the land that we own? Right. Are we selling so, it? So what we're offering, I want someone to take a quick look at whether it's building. Obviously, and, we're not doing perks. We're not doing And let's anything. get an update on the fourth. Yes on whatever we can do to take care of, you know, Nancy's gone through all of her evaluation of these lands. So who, who's going to tell us whether it's buildable or not? I would have Nate look at it. Have Nate look at it. Yep. And not spend 
a lot of time just yep. just the square footage yeah take he, he he knows how to do this black magic pretty darn quick up one circle yep <laughs> well <laughs> the one you're going to do away with i think i know we're not getting any traction with that for some reason yep. that's too bad Okay, so that's the old business. Uh, and I did get the uh, quote from Brian go, dating back to September 1st and all of his anticipated services with the, doing the turtle sweep through uh, Natural Heritage. It's $9,000. So I'd like to sign his, um, agree to his proposal. Yes. But you can do that. Yep. Yes, yeah, you do. Yep. It's under ten. Yeah. Yep. Lorraine wants to do the turtle sweep. Right. Huh. Right. What I like is if you don't find any, if you do find them, it's still. I, I didn't hear about the monitor because that's what they did at the New Bedford Airport. So that expansion oh, yeah. was years in the making. Yep. Years in the making. So, I thought you could remove them to another area. And that was that discussed? Well, that's not yes. an option. Yeah, no, you can do that. Okay. Uh, that's what okay. she said. But you have to. You, they want to track them. Wow. You know, they want to put a radio. Okay. On. I didn't make that up. That was sincere. No, no, no. That <laughs> no, they do that. But yeah. but I was under the impression that that wasn't the case of tracking them. You could just move them because if you've got to track them, you're not going to break ground. Let's find out if there's turtles. Well, no, I think you can move them. But you have to put the, the device on them to see where they go. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think they did the tracking first. Yeah, didn't first. they say that we could move them? She didn't, she didn't indicate. She said that we could, if we jump through the hoops that she's proposing, yep. okay. regardless of the turtle sweep outcome, we yep. could break ground mm -hmm. okay. as we plan nope. in the spring. Nope, that's good. Nope. Well, like you said, forge ahead. Some turtles can climb those fences, though, if they're not tight enough. Oh, but we'll put a police detail, see if anyone's putting them there. <laughs> we should. Yep. Okay. What about those GPS units? Yeah, Can't we just track them at night from our yeah. cell phones? Where the turtles are going? If they're going up can in a vertical direction. Like they're, 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 they're cold, they're cold, they're right. cold blooded, yeah. I think, so it doesn't, we can't track them. And when, do, when is the turtle sweep happening? Do we know? Well, this, it has to be at night. Up, up Soon. October. No, I think it's during the day. Sorry. With the <laughs> night vision goggles. Um, I don't know if the deadline to do them is mid-October. But he's so doing that. No, no. We were lucky yeah. as far yeah. as the yeah. timing. Yeah. We were able to get in there yes. and. Oh. Well, no, no, but my point is, is he's he's gonna you're gonna follow up with him and get him yep. moving on that yep. because yep. one wow. of the things she said was that if it gets too late into October, yep. she doesn't won't consider it a valid turtle sweep because right. if yeah. it gets cold they don't move right we're getting cool weather this weekend well well it's no not cold weather yeah 40, cold. it's not cold if it was 45 right. it'd be a problem but. okay all right so that is that the um, all right so the other update is the assessor's building Rita met with some folks that are interested in bidding on that you want to yeah, we, that? we had the walk through on September 20th Nate and I and Lorraine went over there, and I think there were six people present. Um, and uh, some thinking it was business zoned already, but Nate explained that it could be um, a home occupation, some interested as a residential uh, building. So I think we will get some bids on October 13th. But trying to get it on the MLS <coughs> listing, you can't without a dollar amount. So we tried Zillow and you have to have a purchase price so I, I think we're missing an opportunity to expand that that base i mean if you open the quote if you would that that's fine we, we get we, the quotes we open them if they're out of the ballpark then you've got to just get a realtor and multiple list it all i'll put put an amount down yeah yeah i've seen auction items listed yeah. on MLS before. I mean, I don't know, they put a dollar yeah. down or they put $5,000 or some minimum bid. Usually the bank, um, when I worked at the bank anyways, the minimum opening bid was usually what was owed on it. Right. We would publish an sure. right. opening right. bid on the auction. Right, right. So yeah. I, I don't know, you can, you can 
Wait till October, when is it, 13th? The 13th at 10 a.m. Yeah. You open them. Or you can figure out how to get them on there anyways. Get them on where? Well, on, on MLS. If, if the board wants to I, uh, say a minimum pri price, we can. I, well, I, do, I do, but I'm only one-third of it. I, you're trying to sell property to people that drive by it. To the highest bidder. The, the people drive by it, mm -hmm. not looking right. at multiple listing of what's available in Lakeville or exactly. any other town. You're excluding. 99%. You're excluding 99 percent of the of the people that shop on the internet. I don't. We were going to list it based on the last meeting. If that takes a minimum price, we should do that. My opinion. You can wait till the, you can wait till the thirteenth, or you could figure it out now because wanna, I agree. We definitely want to have it on MLS, and how you you know if you have to determine the price, we can set a minimum. You can just put, you know, minimum bid two hundred thousand dollars. If you don't bid, get anyone, you don't get anyone. Minimum bid is is five thousand dollars. It's going to the highest bidder. Yeah. Like, what do we care? Yeah. But the we, it is. Yeah, the RFP has been issued, stating no, um, going to the highest bidder. All right. So, how, what's so, the criteria in which we're selling it? To the highest bidder in the RFP. Right. Right. That's my point. Did we talk about this before? Yes. I thought it was going on. MLS. I thought is it was going issue? on. Yes. You have to listing. have a dollar amount, well, and we that, don't that's have new, a minimum. That's news today. That was not correct. What was talked about at the last meeting, when, or whatever. To put meeting. it on MLS, correct. And I've been through three realtors. Um, no, no one will put it on MLS. They require the sale price. So, one of the realtors recommend said, "Go on Zillow. You don't need a sale price." Right, but if you just put sale price is ten thousand dollars <coughs> with an asterisk. See remarks. We. This is an oh, RFP. We tried, we tried all of that. We spent a lot. Right, but you just put in remarks. This is an auction. We could do that. We just couldn't get past the money part. We put one dollar. We tried zero dollars, but. Well, zero zero probably dollar? doesn't work. I think it looked for a reasonable. reasonable at least Zillow did. If. if if you were going to list it, there's no harm. MLS in saying, will take it. There's no can. harm in saying minimum price a hundred thousand dollars. You're not going to take less than that. You're hoping it's in the two hundred thousand dollar range. But we've got to list it on MLS. I don't think this is. I agree. You're missing. We're missing out on. 99 percent of of anybody that i'm not that even that objecting misleading, though thinking about that now they it no that. they do it all the time your bank you read every notice in the foreclosures in the bank minimum it gives a minimum $5, bid yeah. and it says yeah uh, that's minimum. at the auction when they auction it off you're going to have to come forward with the deposit and that's a minimum certified check of five thousand dollars that's not your bid that's your deposit right sure or to, if you win the bid, then you've got to come forward. But that's not the minimum. That's just the deposit. I don't mind establishing a price as a minimum if that's what we have to do. I don't even mind hiring a realtor. But if, if we don't have to do that, we don't have to do that. It should be on MLS. So tell us how it gets there. You we have need to. Hire to a realtor. Well, well, no, we have to say what is the sale price. You put a minimum. So minimum price of whatever, hundred thousand, hundred and fifty thousand minimum. Oh. Tell me and I'll put it in. Five. What do you guys say? Ten. Well, I mean, I the thing is. Kind of misleading that it's vacant. But know. it should have five grand. But please refer to yeah. the town of Lakeville's requirements Fine. for an RFP. Fine. We have all that in there already. Yeah. So, so, so put any we amount of money in. Don't 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 put the dollar. Put something. Whether it's five thousand, ten thousand. You want dollar? Whatever. Just to put something in there. 
If, and say you're subject, because that will, way it's very if, obvious if it will to take someone it. that if that's will not take what this is. Yeah, if, and you if, say, if it takes a dollar, subject do a dollar. to you know the town of Lakeville. It's the same Lake footnote. Right. I mean, a dollar isn't any it's different than five dollars. We actually right. put the link bitters to the RFP. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's all in there. It was just. But you don't want to do Zillow. You want to do MLS. Right. Right. Forget Zillow. MLS is is what will kick out an email to every real estate agent in this area that tracks Lakeville. They'll kick an email email out to any person that's interested in property in Lakeville, developers, buyers, you know, anybody, and it will do it like that, and it will get a thousand eyes on that And I listing. believe Zillow, too. And it kicks it out to all of the websites, too. So it, you'll get thousands of exposure to thousands of people, whereas the sign was a great idea, and we got exposure to a handful of people that have an interest in it, but you'll you'll expand the footprint by a factor of a thousand by by getting on MLS. It's absolutely yeah. one hundred percent got to do it. Um, that's why I said you know try to get in touch with with KP Law about how to do it from the procurement perspective. You said that I did the last meeting. He said, call them up because I'm sure that they've listed or advised people on how to list for other people. Good project for Lorraine. For the dollar amount aspect. Solar panels and uh, list that assessor's office. I'm glad I wasn't in a hurry to use the money for the assessor's office for anything. <laughs> to, like, renovate it? Holy crap. To the move? Yeah. It's, uh... A but that, yeah, that's. So you can give us an update on one on Wednesday Thanks, too. <laughs> yeah. cool. Thanks. Wednesday's going to be a busy meeting. Make your own decision. Figure out if if, if a dollar doesn't work and five thousand does. Put whatever you have to. Yeah. No, but call KP Law. I mean, I did suggest that at the last meeting. They'll know what to how do. to do this in terms of a, a procurement angle. You can ask him tomorrow. That person won't know. Be a bunch of them there. I knew uh, oh, yeah, that you had around. said to call the get it on MLS through the realtors, but I I know I didn't make a note on no, sorry, that's fine. sorry Aaron. We talk a lot at these meetings and I hardly ever think about them afterwards myself, so because <laughs> I'm exhausted. Oh, cool. we driving in on the fifth from here. Is anyone offering to drive? Are we all on our own. What are we doing? Uh, Hiring a Cadillac Escalade to take us in with a limo driver. What Uber. do we do? We, we need to do something. Black car Let's Uber. Plan. Let's um. We can. We want to. We want to leave from here at yeah. nine o'clock, somehow. Yeah. It can be in a rental for all I care. Do we? One twelve. I think it's commercial. Um, I have it um, at his office, and I think it was one twelve commercial. Yeah, we can figure that out. I yeah. want to. I want to yeah. go into yeah. executive yeah. session because yeah. I have to pee. Can yeah. Can I just ask one question, Aaron? Under we could have saved. Items. We could have saved that. <laughs> under other items, our denial on our uh, appeal for the Sterling Place. Does the board want to go any further with that? No. No. Okay. No. Be the dead horse. It's already dead. All right. So any other possible business? Hearing none. I will move that we go into executive session pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, specifically the laborers' union and the fire union. Do we need the fire no, union? No, you don't need the fire union. Um, laborers' union, specifically and only the f laborers' union, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the board and the chair so declares and pursuant to MGL 30 Chapter 30A, Section 21A7, to comply with open meeting law, MGL, Chapter 30A, Section 22F, approval of executive session meeting minutes of September 13, 2017. I declare that this would have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the board, not to return into open session. Second that. Any further discussion? By roll? Roll call. Powderly. Powderly, aye. Burke. Aye. <laughs> and Hollenbeck. Isn't that great? Aye. It's so efficient. Take your bathroom.